I'm Sean. This is the story time. I'm going to do a book haul. I have got, I was going to do one big book haul, but Bert, in his wisdom, I suggested I split it into two. So this is just books that were gifted to me um, as just for being me. Thanks. And because it was Christmas, yeah. <laughs> So um, I got books from Bert. He always buys me books. He's a very good book giver. And then um, I gave my mum and my sister a wish list, um, which I hadn't done before, which is quite exciting, and they picked some stuff off it. And then I got a few books from other people as well, two of which Bert helped with. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll do Bert's ones first. So this one you might have seen because it was in one of the vlogs, and Bert got me this when I wasn't feeling great during Vlogmas, I can't remember at what point, but this is Sky Papers. Vlogmas is all a blur now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sky Papers by Jamika Agilon. Um, and it's, uh, I saw it on Sage's channel and Sage recommended it. Um, it's on the feminist press and it's like a 90s queer black uh, British artist in the London underground scene whose existence is threatened by the rise of state surveillance. So, I mean, I very much like 90s queer. I'm not sure about state surveillance. <laughs> yeah, I, th it kind of, I think it kind of goes a little bit sort of sci-fi. Uh, Michelle T says a bit uh, Philip K. Dickensian. Yeah, so kind of the rise of CCTV and policing, but then kind of mixed with making multimedia art, throwing drug fueled parties and busking in tube stations to get by explores youth poetry and what it means to come to terms with queerness and gorgeous cover I think who's the cover by mm -mm. oh also that's interesting so she is like a oh she had she went to goldsmiths the author and um, uh, got an MA in communication and culture and society and is based in London and Paris um, cover art by Elise Peterson who came out in 2021 um, I think the one like Bert got me loads of good books I think the oh one of them you saw actually didn't you because that was also in the vlog so we'll just quickly mention that one which is this young adult uh, queer one as well which is Some Girls Do by Jennifer Dugan um, I really liked Hot Dog Girl which is really cute and I really like this cover as well it's really pretty so um, I think this is like going to a new school and as an elite track athlete, yeah, forced to transfer late in her senior, senior year after it turns out being gay is against her private Catholic school's code of conduct. So I think that one's going to be good. Um, then this one that Bert got me, it was one that I've been wanting for ages, but it's not like published in the UK yet. And I think what happens sometimes you can get them, even if they're not published here, but they're kind of more expensive. So this was one that was more expensive, and I think Bert got it when it was slightly cheaper, but still a little bit pricey. But so excited is Cackle by Rachel Harrison, which has been talked about as like a, a mix of Practical Magic and Gilmore Girls. Which I think, you know, isn't it? You also wrote The Return, which was blurbed as... The Shining meets Sex and the City, <laughs> which was actually a good blurb, I think. Um, so yeah, Cackle, it's good to be wicked. It looks really lovely. I've heard like very good things about it. Oh, it's actually blurbed by Emily M. Danforth, which is interesting. Um, and Alexis Henderson, the author of View of the Witching, and Molly Polig, who wrote The Unsuitable. I read that a while ago and really liked it. Um, and also Alma Katsu, who seems to be blurbing, blurbing everything author of The Hunger and The Deep. Um, yeah, I think it's like Cozy Witches, maybe. I don't know. I'm really excited to read this one. I think I'm going to read this one next. Thank you, Bertie. Welcome. <laughs> he also got me The Secret Life of Fungi. Can you see that one? And that's by Elia Whiteley. Discoveries from a Hidden World. I know that someone recommended this to me. I have a feeling it was Molly. But I can't remember. Um, and it was because I was reading the Mervyn or mentioned the Merlin Sheldrake one, which I still haven't finished, and saying that I wasn't sure about the writing style. 
um, which actually I'm kind of liking more than I thought I would, but uh, Molly recommended this one, um, which is just like a little book, because I think it's like maybe like not just a, I think it's got a bit more of the personal in it as well. Um, Alea Whiteley is a, she writes kind of horror, would you say? Yeah. You, you see sort of kind of slightly weird, yeah, weird horror crossover British. maybe. One of them, I think they're involving fungus sometimes. Oh, is yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So she wrote the, the Beauty and Greensmith, if you've seen either of those. But that looks really good. And this is one I didn't know about. It's got a great cover and um, title, which is Pop Song by Larissa Pham. Adventures in Art and Intimacy. Um, so it's essays, uh, blurbed by Esme Wajin Wang and Melissa Fabos. Um, and Larissa Pham is an artist and writer who lives in Brooklyn. And this is kind of... Um, it says, like, a song that feels written for only you, Larissa Pham's debut work of non-fiction, captures the imagination and refuses to let it go. It's a book about distances near and far. And it, it says also it's kind of, like, about um, abstract art, um, a sort of, like, art and writing and music, I guess, kind of, like, culture in general. I think this one's going to be great. Where did you see about this one, Bertie? Yeah, I can't remember, Johnny. Ah, hmm. I haven't said but you. Yeah. It does sound good, that one. It does sound good. And then the last one from Bert is this one, which is also has a great cover, but only bought good cover books. This is The View Was Exhausting, Michaela Clements, and I can't quite understand the font on there. Julie. On Julie Data? I can't... Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to read the, the font on the front. Um, so this is a couple, a lesbian couple. Who live in Berlin? Um, and I think is this one like a little bit of an arty one as well, Bertie? I can't remember. It's very glamorous. I think. It's glamorous. Saint Tropez. I'm very glamorous. Yeah. I like a glamorous book. International movie star meets the beautiful son of a millionaire. Yeah. There you go. It's like a summer read, isn't it? Oh, nice. Should I save this one for Maybe, summer? Maybe. Yeah. So that's the ones Bertie got me. And then these are the ones that I got from my family. So my sister and my mum and dad. Or my sister and her family and my mum and dad. So, um, yeah. I've got Chuck Puldick. Consider this. Moment, it's a non-fiction. Moments in my writing life after which everything was different. I've already read a little bit of the intro. Which talks about how he was um, chucked out of kind of art after a couple of years, asked to leave a particular writing group that he was in. Um, the uh, person running it said maybe he wasn't a good fit for the group because due to his fiction, no one felt safe around him. And then because of that, he joins and the writer says, maybe you need to join this other group, which is run by Tom Spambauer. And Tom Spambauer is one of Bert's is is your favourite writer. Okay. And he's like uh, all about like dangerous writing, which I guess... Chuck Palahniuk would be the most famous mm -hmm. of the dangerous writers. Chuck and uh, Amy Hempel as well. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. So I think, like, I don't know. I've read like a lot of a lot of Chuck back in the day and really enjoyed them. I don't feel like kind of. I don't know if I re I want to read his fiction now necessarily. I don't know. Maybe I read Guts. And st I read them. I done it all. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I do like his non-fiction though I think I've read his other one which is like about Portland um, and I think this is just like about writing um, so he says that he shares stories and generous advice on what makes writing powerful and what makes for powerful writing so I think that, yeah I think that's going to be good I don't know when this came out oh, 2020, so perfect this next one um, has kind of been one of those ones that I've casually wanted for years when we, when I worked in a bookshop we used to have it on the shelf and I kind of wanted it but it was a little bit pricey um put it on my list and now I have it which is this gorgeous witch's bible by Janet and Stuart Farrar Farrar um so this is this is kind of from a little while ago I think is it 80s 81 and it's you go. I think it's like um, I don't think it's like necessarily that exciting to read, but it's got all your kind of basics about what you need to do 
um, well there's a chapter here on reincarnation the rationale of witchcraft a seashore ritual so it's got like rituals but also just like history um i'm really excited that i have this now i'm gonna kind of dip in and out of it first i don't know the cover is just great i always felt like when it was in the bookshop that it was you know pulling off my dangerous writing felt a little bit dangerous <laughs> I think it was shrink used to be shrink wrapped yeah, all the time, so you could never really look at it either. Mm -hmm. Anyway, here it is. Maybe that made it feel dangerous. Yeah, maybe that was it. Yeah. So you could never, yeah. yeah. So amazing. And then I've got Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters. So I read her other one, The River Has Teeth, and really liked it. Um, it's young adults, I think, like young adult magical. The River Has Teeth was queer. So I'm wondering if this is as well. Claire, Claire Legrand said it's a gorgeous, creepy gem of a book. Got another good cover. Um, Intimacies by Katie Kitamura. Um, we've got her other book, which you've read and I haven't read, and you really liked, didn't you? Separation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I really liked it. I thought it was good. And I know, that, yeah, Separation. So I'll have to read that too. And I know that um, Hannah, Hannah May really liked this one as well. Um, yeah. Is it like a kind of international... Interpreters come to The Hague to escape New York and work at the international court. Personal dramas. Um, I got the Dave Grohl book. I kind of didn't want to buy it myself, but I was quite happy for someone else to buy it for me. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I think... I feel like we all like Dave Grohl. He's just likeable, isn't he? I don't have any like massive interest in him, um, but I've heard this is good, and I I'm up for reading it. So here it is. Like it's won, didn't it? Just win some award for like best music book mm -hmm. of this year. Yeah. So I quite like a music biog. There you go. And then a nice cookbook. Oh, I didn't check how to say this. Prove Provecho? I don't know. You can tell me if I'm right. It's, it's a Mexican cookbook by I guess Ed. It's like a more like a silent V, maybe like a Proeco. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Maybe. By Edgar Castajon. And it's 100 vegan Mexican recipes to celebrate culture and community. It's this, really good, though. Yeah, yeah, I've had a flick through it, and it's, you know really nicely set out anyway but also just stuff like I wouldn't you know I don't cook or I wouldn't really know how to cook um so there's lots of tacos in there lots of kind of dips and salsas some hot chocolate so it looks really nice um but suggested I've been working on my what I'm calling my intentions for 2022 and Bert suggested one of them should be that I make a new recipe each month from one of my cookbooks. Was it each month or each yeah. week? Each month. Each month. <laughs> so I'll make some of these. So that's my family. Thank you. And then these ones are from some friends. So this one is from Bert's brother. So this is the Grady Hendrix. It's the only Grady Hendrix I didn't have. So this is we sell, or we sold our souls. Um, it's again a good cover. It looks like a sort of nineties magazine, music magazine. Um, I think it's about this woman who is like in a band that didn't quite make it, and then she hasn't been in a band for ages. Um, she works in a in a. She's a manager of a hotel, I think. And then I think... <laughs> that sounds great. So... <laughs> I think she's in a band with someone in the 90s. I don't know if they kind of... Um, oh, yeah. She's in a band from the 90s. And then this other person in the band like went on a solo career. She didn't make it. And then he... Um, something happens. He comes back into her life. Maybe, I'm guessing from the title, did he sell his soul... To get famous. Um, this is from my friend Shirley. I think, but 
Did you choose this? Yeah. But also chose this. Um, <laughs> this is The Trial of Lizzie Borden, a true story by Cara Robertson. It's a newish one. It's from 2019. Um, very interested in the Lizzie Borden case. It's kind of grim. Um... And, you know, really sensationalised. Uh, but I'm interested in uh, reading kind of a more current one and seeing what... I guess she's going to have to spin it in a certain way to make... to have a reason to write another book. So I'm interested in where she goes with it. And then this is from the lovely Jessica. So this is... I've never heard of this one. This is Lady Bits by Kate Jonas. Um, and it's short stories, but Jessica really liked them. And I think they're kind of... You know, a little bit. I, I get the feel that maybe they're a bit like um, the Dangers of Smoking in Bed type thing. That sort of slightly dark, maybe a little bit um, witchy, magical type feel. So she said she really liked them. Again, look at that cover. And then the last one I've got. My friend Steph sent me this. This is Mending Life, a handbook for repairing clothes and hearts by Nina and Sonia Montenegro. This is a really lovely book. Um, and yeah, it's kind of as the title suggests, but it's got like basics of, of sewing and mending and stitches and darning, but then also has like this, you know, it's got about the art of patching and kind of just, it's got like, um, you know, writing in there as well. It's not just a hundred percent practical. Um, another of my intentions is to kind of get back into more creative stuff for next year so I'm going to be using this for that. That's haul number one. Um, yeah, let me know if you've read any or you're interested in any or any I should read first. Let me know if you know anything about the Witch's Bible. <laughs> Was it in your bookshop? Did you think it was like kind of cool and it's shrink wrap, cool and dangerous. Okay, see you soon.